I didn't have faith. See, I, I lived trying to go get things I already had because I had no faith. And later on in life, I started to realize when I didn't get the job and the pain, the heartaches that you talk about, the suffering, when I lost everything, my mom would always say, don't play the zero sum game. I said, what do you mean? She said, there's enough of everything for everyone. What do you want? You live in a world of more than enough. Trust me. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. So my guest today is the legendary David Meltzer, one of Marshall Goldsmith's top 100 business coaches in the world, as well as being the co-founder of Sports One Marketing. David is also the chairman of the Unstoppable Foundation, Variety Magazine, Sports Humanitarian of the Year, and host of the Top 5 Podcast, The Playbook. David, thanks so much for having me at your studio. It's a real treat to have you here. We're so excited. We're launching our Apple TV deal with Two Minute Drill in season three. But we've also had some exciting news. I know that bio changes all the time, but there's something in my bio that I'm extremely proud of. What's up? Um, I've been blessed to be the chief chancellor of Junior Achievement University. At 10 years old, I was in Junior Achievement myself. I'm wow. an alumni of Junior Achievement, but all the great Brian Tracy, Bob Proctor, who just sure, passed sure, away, sure. Mary Morrissey, Jack Canfield, Bob, uh, Mark Victor Hansen, they all have donated their content to young entrepreneurs, 15 to 25. And Junior Achievement Worldwide is the seventh largest NGO, and I'm blessed to be the Chief Chancellor of Junior Achievement big deal. University Worldwide. And to make it a big deal, not to brag, but I will because it's the charity, not Dave Meltzer, but to be a part of it, we were nominated recently for a Nobel Peace Prize. What? Exactly. What? <laughs> Even my wife's like, what? <laughs> I, I, I read it the first time because they mentioned me in the nomination, yeah. Ashish, the CEO, and I read it, I'm like, you know, you looked like, is this some kind of joke? Yeah, right. Who's pranking me? Exactly, and I asked my wife, I go, can you read this and tell me what this says before I get you know, really excited? But yeah, so we were nominated for uh, a Nobel Peace Prize, so we'll go to Oslo and see if we actually win one. Wow. But it's probably the greatest um, endorsement in my life, meaning I, I don't consider it an achievement, but it's an endorsement of doing good and elevating others to elevate yourself. I mean, just to be on the radar, because you know there's a selection. Oh yeah. There's a bunch of names that they have on there, <laughs> and like, oh yeah, let's, let's send this guy a letter. It's, yeah, Pretty you're on the fun. radar. I'm, you know? I'm blessed. So, yeah. so we'll be praying for you, man, on that one. Thank um, you. A large part of your story, large part of your story, and by the way, I'm looking forward to this VIP launch party of your show here. To, uh, I'm uh, glad to enjoy. Made, we could coordinate it. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> I got two birds one time. Um, a large part of your story was going through hardship. And, uh, you know, I, I want to drill. I got some follow-up questions there because I've seen you. I think a lot of people have seen you on line and TV and your IG talk about that all you're always referencing that that was the best experience that happened to your life how come how come you embraced that hardship as one of the biggest experiences of your life because before I understood it was the best uh, thing that could happen to me I didn't have faith see I, I lived trying to go get things I already had because I had no faith I was trying to get wealthy get healthy get worthy get happy when I already was mm -hmm. and without the hardship and the analogy that I give is my mom's to me a saint, second grade teacher, raised six kids on her own, sure. packed my dinner in a paper bag so she could go fill up humbly turnstiles at convenience stores with greeting cards just so we could eat, empowered all six of her children to be passionate, purposeful and profitable. Uh, she believed the fetus wasn't fully developed until after graduate school. All my siblings went to the Ivy Leagues, graduated summa cum laude, wow. extraordinary scholars, Harvard, wow. Penn, and Columbia. Wow. And I grew up happy with nothing. Okay. Um, but the faith in my life was that I had to go get everything. And, and that validated you. It did. And I remember when I was three, I reached out to touch a hot stove. Uh -oh. And my mom, who my wife will tell you, David's problem is his mom never hit him. That's what I was <laughs> Right? Never got beat. Exactly. Because <laughs> I had no dad, right? So I reach out to t touch a hot stove, and my mom slaps the back of my hand and screams, no. Well, I'd never been hit by my mom. You remember that at three Oh, because she had never even yelled at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was terrified, and I just started to cry. I'm like, what did I do? Why are you punishing me? And she yeah. just grabbed me and hugged me and said, I'm not punishing you, I'm protecting you. I'm promoting you. 
And later on in life, I started to realize when I didn't get the job, I didn't get the deal, I didn't get into Stanford, I didn't get what I wanted in life, the girl left me, cheated on me, whatever happened, the pain, the heartaches that you talk about, the mm -hmm. suffering, when I lost everything, yeah. over $100 million, I then realized that there is something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source. Unlike my mom, my mom's ignorant and humble. Yeah. But this is an omniscient. They know everything. Yeah. So when I don't get the job, when I have failures, setbacks, and mistakes in my life, all of a sudden it clicked in my head. This source loves me more than my mom loves me. I must be protected and promoted <laughs> as if I'm touching a hot stove. And that nuance, that paradigm shift made me realize I am happy, I mm -hmm. am healthy, I am wealthy, I'm worthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? Because just as if I would ask my mom for something and it was gonna be good for me, something better for me, a better place, a better situation, she'd put me in there immediately. So will this source. Hmm. And so faith is the only reason that I believe failures, setbacks, mistakes are propelling us, promoting us and protecting us. And as long as we learn the lesson, we'll get there a lot faster. It's interesting that you say that because a lot of people don't want to buy in it, into that today. And the, I didn't. The, the, the I con, didn't. Right. Because the kind of argument is, well, let me cry long enough. Let me complain long enough because that's who gets the mic today. Because back, back in the day, the people that were behind the mic were the winners. Yeah. But today, the people that got the mic are also the complainers and the winners. And the complainers seem to have a larger megaphone. Yeah, the why me's have it bigger than the try me's. <laughs> oh, right? The why me's are bigger than the try me's. That's, that's a meme right there. <laughs> so, so when, when, when you're looking at um, your ability to pick yourself back up again, that's $100 million. That's a lot, that's a lot of money. Two, two things stick out to me. Number one, you, when you went to your mother and she's like, what do you need, honey? Do you need money? It changed my life. She, you need money. Listen, her son was $100 million. Your you, mother's you asking realize you. I lost her house, too. So not right. only did I have to go tell her I lost everything, but I forgot to take the house out of my name. And the only reason I wanted to be rich when I was young was to buy her that house and a car. Wow. Wow. And she just didn't care. She was like, I thought, I said, did you hear me? I literally <laughs> said to her, did you hear what I said? She goes, yeah. I heard you. I get choked up. Huh. Are you okay? Yeah. Do you need any money? Huh. And I got something clicked in my head that this is unconditional love. <sighs> it's different than trading a credit quid pro quo, a scarce world of zero sum game. My mom would always say, don't play the zero sum game. I said, what do you mean? She said, there, there's enough of everything for everyone. What do you want? You live in a world of more than enough. Trust me. And I learned to trust her. And for mother to say that after the father of her children left, for her to still be able to say that, what amazing character uh, your mom would show through. The second one that, that sticks out to me in this process is, is your wife. Yeah. Because she could have, peace out, dude, I'm out of here, you know? So I see a lot, and I'm sure you've seen this too as well in your career. In my career in 23 years now as an entrepreneur, I've seen a lot of guys build, 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 but they marry the wrong woman, they marry the wrong husband, and poof, it goes away. How important is it to make sure you're picking the right spouse for your life and as well your business, your finances? Well, my grandfather gave me probably the best piece of advice uh, that uh, talks about this. My grandfather always told me, all you need is three things in life. So what is that, Gramps? He said, number one, you need to find one intimate partner. One person that's the liaison between you, your family, and your children. One person. You will spend a third of your life with your family, and if you don't pick the right person, you won't be happy. Huh. Second thing, you need to find one thing, an activity that you get paid for, that you love. One. One thing that you love, an activity that you get paid for that you love, you will spend a third of your life in activity you get paid for. Mm -hmm. And if you love it, you'll be happy for that third. And then finally, in his Russian accent, because he came over in 1913, he said, and you need to buy the best bed you can afford. <laughs> and he said, you will spend a third of your life sleeping. A third of your life, 26 years of your life, minimum, will be spent sleeping. And he's Russian. He said, shtuping. You can go look that up. <laughs> Procreate. Uh, so he said, buy the best bed you can find. If you're happy sleeping and shtuping, yeah. your life will be complete. So uh, for me, it's one third of the most important thing is to find the right person that's aligned with your values. Yeah. That is four things. Grateful to be married to yeah. you. 
So they're willing to find the light, the love, and the lessons in you. Yeah. Two, forgiving, mm-hmm. as my wife was. Also, they need to be accountable, yeah. right? And then they need to be inspired by you and through you. If you live with someone that's grateful, forgiving, accountable, and inspired, yeah. your life will be amazing, but your wife or husband will be amazing. But more importantly, that relationship, like the one that I have, it's the, my wife will be here today. It's the greatest thing, I, the best decision of my life. I, I see where that uh, inspiration, like I, I, I love seeing in a crowd, I'm sure you, in an entire crowd might be filled when you're speaking on stage, but you know exactly where your wife is at, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Time, right? it's, in fact, one time I was speaking in India to the Minister of Technology, thousands of people, and she sits front center. Mm-hmm. And halfway through my speech, which was difficult because I had a translator, you probably know how that is, and she got up in the middle of my speech and walked out and everyone's just looking at her and i was like completely shook threw, threw you off yeah totally threw me off yeah yeah I, I was worried there was an emergency like i had no idea what had happened was it was the only window of time that my children were awake we had got younger it. kids at the got time it. so she had to leave but she didn't tell me got it and so i'm like did i say something like and she's walking could, out and you... my second half of my speech sucked because <laughs> i was so thrown that i didn't know where she went and why she went see babe watching this yeah, every time i tell you sit down because you throw me off i'm only looking to inspire one person yeah. it's, it's my wife and i'm glad we share that that same sentiment um how did you start to parlay your father's advice how, how long did it take you to really find out what you love to do and get paid for it to do because you know yeah. be, you're a lawyer yeah you're thinking about doing legal research <laughs> I'm all over the you're place. still wondering if this is gonna make me happy i will tell you my mom although she had that philosophy that the fetus wasn't fully developed after graduate school and she i want to be a professional football player and she would say that's fine just after you're a doctor or a lawyer when you finish med school or law school you can be a professional football player <laughs> right this is the way she thought but what she did teach me and encouraged me to do is to enjoy the consistent every day. And I think Ooh. that's my superpower. Ooh. Very few people on earth, okay. and I say this humbly, are as consistent as me. And I think you see that in my social media. Yeah. Very few right. people every single day are there of service or value. See, there's those components of being consistent of one, providing value. If you're consistent in providing value, you'll provide more value. If you're consistent in providing value, you'll start to provide value well. And if you consistently provide more value well, you'll provide more value well to more people. And see, the law of potential is consistency, but the law of profit is serving it well to as many people. So the best artists, athletes, musicians, business people are serving well, but serving many. Got it. And it always, the law of profitability will come from that. And so my mom taught me to be consistent and persistent there was no quitting. I was a ball boy for the Clippers. Cool. Doctor, uh, first game, I begged to be one, right? 12 yeah, years yeah. old, San Diego Clippers, by the way. That's San Diego there. Clippers. Yeah, San Diego Clippers. And first game on the visitor's side, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was a complete jerk to me. So I came home crying. He's like, boy, I, I screwed up too because my first day. And I was 12 years old, about 78 pounds, four feet six. <laughs> Kareem, I was shattered. I'm like, I'm quitting. My mom said, you're end of the season. Yeah. You made a commitment. Next game, what happened? Dr. J's in the video oh, in the locker man. room. I think every star is a jerk. Not Dr. J, man. He's like, son, hand on my back, giving me socks, signing them for all my siblings. To this day, talk about karma. People ask me who the coolest athlete I've ever met, and I ran the most notable sports agency in the world. I had a global sports marketing company with Warren Moon. I'll tell you, Dr. J. Not Shit. because anything other than when I was 12 years old, yeah. he treated me so well. And we become friends since then. I tell this story all over and purposely tell the story because he had no idea when I was 12 years old that by being kind to his future self, Mm -hmm. that it would be better branding and marketing than anything else he could do to a 12 year old. Crazy. What I want to go back to what you just said there. Your superpower is consistency. consistency. What are your no matter what's then every day? Non-negotiables. There's three. Okay. One, my health. Most important. If you're not healthy, if you're healthy, you get as many wishes as you want. I believe wishes are the greatest asset that we have, that people don't ask. Remember what I believe in. I have faith that there's a, something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful with everything, more than enough. Yep. So you have to be able to wish or ask. When you're healthy, many wishes as you want. If you're unhealthy, ask Steve Jobs this. Mm. You only have one wish. 
So health to me, a minimum of, I put time to my non-negotiables every day. Okay. So a minimum, minimum of one hour a day on my health. Two, family, non-negotiable. Minimum 30 minutes with my wife, 30 minutes with my 11-year-old son. A minimum, I'm gonna repeat minimum because people give me crap about this, two minutes a day with my three daughters, <laughs> 22, 20, and 18. If anyone has 22, 20, and 18 year old daughters, you know you're blessed just to get two minutes. You can ask for five. You're lucky to get a text message. Thank you. <laughs> but two minutes a day is worth more than two on a Saturday, two hours on a Saturday, but I'm consistent with it every single day. I'm telling my kids, and then here's the best piece of advice of this interview, changed yeah. my life. You know I'm close to my mom. You've seen all the stories. Well. My mom is your typical Jewish mom, right? Her black belt. David. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Her, like literally, I always said she's a third degree black belt. People are like, what? I'm like, yeah, and Jewish guilt. And it hurts. Uh, but I call my mom every day, a minimum of one minute, minimum again, to tell her four things. And if you do this with your parents, if you have any, like most people, difficult relationship because of the expectations and the baggage that has occurred with your own parents, even though you love them, they'll make you drive an hour down to San Diego to fix a screen door, even though you can pay someone to go fix it, and you're wondering why, I'll tell you, because you're not calling your mom or dad every day and telling them these four things. One, tell your parents that you're healthy. That's what they're most concerned about. Tell them, no matter how old you are, that you're happy, because that's what they want for you. Tell them that you love them, to remind them, recollect them, and remember where and what you come from and through. Yeah. And then finally, tell them you appreciate them, that they add value to your life. If you tell your parents every day that you're ha healthy, happy, love and appreciate them, it'll clear all the interference between you and the most relative relationship in your life, the one that causes the most pain, interference, still setbacks, mistakes, and failures in our lives are determined by that relationship. And you can heal it by simply spending a minimum of one minute a day. Non-negotiable health, non-negotiable family. Then finally, non-negotiable time. I, I, I call it non-negotiable time, meaning activity I get paid for, activity I don't get paid for. I am a student of my calendar. I study with productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, what I have planned, what I don't have planned in my sleep. I'm efficient, effective, and statistically successful with the man-made construct of time. I know there's 1,440 minutes a day, 24 hours a day that is gifted for me, so I have daily practices to utilize my time in the most efficient, effective, and statistically successful way to provide value, to be productive, to be accessible to as many people as I can, mm -hmm. to receive, Remember, there's no gift ever given without a receiver. Wow. See, people don't understand giving and receiving are one, and most people have a problem receiving. When you breathe, the plants are receiving. Sure. And then they breathe out, and, and you're receiving. receiving. There's no gift given that isn't received, so you need to be equally as good at receiving as you are at giving. Remember that, very important. So I study that accessibility and then finally gratitude, the only common denominator of happiness. Only, no matter how sick you are or well, no matter how rich you are or poor, no matter how tall you are or short, if we're gracious, we have the common denominator of happiness. And so I teach people not only to find the light, the love and the lessons, but in the context of time. What do I mean? 80% of people's time is spent on things that bleed you. They're not cognizant of it, but 80% of your time, man-made constructive, 24 hours a day, 14 hour, 1,440 minutes a day, is spent 80% of it on things that bleed you, people that bleed you, jobs that bleed Instead, if you can use this gratitude, I'm gonna find the light, the love, and the lessons in you, but I'm also gonna determine, is it worth my time? Oh, wow. So if I find a closed mind, I run away. It ain't worth yeah. my time. Yeah. If I have a relationship that's bleeding me, I'm gonna let it fall away or even fire it in my life. Yep. If I have an opportunity and activity that's bleeding me, I'm not gonna do it. Yep. I'm gonna choose and prioritize by what feeds me. I'm gonna shift the paradigm and spend at least 80% of my time on things that feed me and feed it and get exponential results, aggregate effect and compound interest in my life <laughs> with good habits that have great mindset, hard set and hand set that make me happy and allow me to make other people happy, which is my main mission in life. Boom. Boom. <laughs> One of the things that uh, sparked my attention, um, which you just said, is your most viewed video on your YouTube channel, which is you flipping a thousand dollars into I think twenty thousand in thirty days. Yeah. Okay. It's massive with amount of, with, ma cars. with the cars. Yeah. And so I'm just 
you know, I, I'm paying attention to the, the guys that you're talking to. And I'm really wondering how many of them are, is it really sinking into? I, I can, I, I'm reading that by body language. When, when, when you, you're talking about a full cup, and what you just talked about also requires some work. Because what you talked about is you talked to 15 people that have the car for sale, and 90% of them say no to you. 99. <laughs> right, right, right. Majority of them say that, and then a lot of these people give up. Today, you can make so much stupid, dumb money, but short-term money. But a lot of people, back to the complainers, many people are trying to talk people into lower standards instead of doing the daily non-negotiables. What's your, what's your take on that? When, when you are sharing things and you feel that somebody yeah. wants to take the easy way, they want to find a shortcut, let me just get in this. It's very simple, right? People's, there's a mathematical equation of coincidence. I call it the mathematical equation of luck. And that equation is two things. One, what you pay attention to. And what most people pay attention to, the complainers, the why me's, are what they don't want, what's missing, or what other people want from them. And then why are they complaining? Why are they saying, why me? Because they get exactly what they pay attention to, <laughs> what they don't want, what's missing, and what other people want for them. See, they haven't learned that not only what you pay attention to, but what you give intention to mm -hmm. equals the coincidences that you want. Attention plus intention equals coincidence. These are the lucky people. But that luck has a pragmatic tool. There's five levels of intention. So if I'm focused on what I want and I say, this is the occupation I want, or this is the red Ferrari what, that I want, you can't sit at home high on your mom's couch dreaming about it, sick, broke, and complaining. It'll never come. Yeah, yeah. You'll just get sickness, brokenness, and complaints. Yeah. Complaining and worrying, they're a duplicative negative because yeah. it's not only putting attention on what you don't want, but it's manifesting it as well. When you worry yeah. about something, you are wishing for it. Mm. You're wishing for it. Remember what I told you about the omniscient all-powerful? Loves to provide you what you wish for because <laughs> it loves you. It doesn't know yeah. that it's what yeah. it is or yeah. you, what it not is if you say you worry. So listen to the five levels of intention. You'll start seeing why people can manifest the great ones. One, what they do. They institute the law of Goya. They get off their ass, make it happen. They don't just look at the red Ferrari. Go Goya is a uh, Puerto Rican. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Puerto Rican yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but get off your ass and they do. They also say the right things. They also think the right things. If you haven't read Napoleon Hill, read yeah. Think and Grow Rich. You'll understand what I say. Of course. They actually believe it as well. But there's one level of intention that separates the spirit of excellence. And it's feel. A lot of people don't take their beliefs to the final uh, feeling of, and the feeling we've defined in two ways usually, mm -hmm. it's called inspiration yep. or confidence. They both display themselves in the same way. When you see someone that's truly confident, not arrogant in fear. Yep. See, fear is a motivator, it's a soul sucker. Fear will get you up, it'll get you started. It'll get you back up and get you back started, but it ain't gonna get you there. Inspiration and confidence, being in the flow will get you fair. Clearing the interference between the light, the love, and the lessons, the omniscient, all-powerful source that's coming through you to give to others. Mm -hmm. This is what it's about. So I tell people, can you feel it? You know, can you feel it energetically, genetically, that you know that it's just a matter of time until you clear the interference between mm -hmm. you and what you want? Mm -hmm. Utilizing, paying attention to it, focusing in on it, and the five levels of intention, pretty soon, all these coincidences occurs and people look around Meltzer Studios yeah. and they think about, man, that guyy's lucky, <laughs> right? Look, I, how, they meet my wife, that's must, the first thing. Nice probably the you, same man. as your wife, I know she watches it. <laughs> they probably see you and they're like, man, is that guy lucky? It ain't luck. I paid attention to and gave intention to the coincidences I won in my relationships, oh. in my business, in my family, in my health, all those things. I know the mathematical equation of luck. When we're in the middle of, of this, or we're getting out of it now, the pandemic. A lot of people got hurt in the last couple of years. You know, there's um, studies out there, the lockdowns really crippled a lot of people, business got shut down, but you learned to pivot and adapt, right? And so if, if I'm watching this right now and I believe in the faith, I wanna be consistent every day, you know, how would you guide and advise somebody to find what it is that they like to do? I found, I found my way of educating people with finances and money by default, I didn't know I'd, like it, I was just a, it was just a living to me until I really started getting inspired by the reaction I get when people I was uh, was helping. But the pandemic caused a lot of people to rethink their current career, the, the era of the Great Reset, the era of the Great Resignation. So, if if I'm your buddy, yeah, right, or I'm a, a, a nephew of yours, 
right? And hey, hey Uncle Uncle David, how, how do I get out of this pit? What's my next move? Let's look at what you're in control of. See, so many people are trying to find outside of them what we want to look inside of it. We give meaning to everything you see, and there's three things you have control of. Your mindset, your heart set, and your hand set. And so what I want you to do is look inside of you and understand what skills do I have? What skills may I need? Or what skills do I have, need, or want? Then two, what knowledge do I have, need, or want? Of not only what, but who? Mm -hmm. Who do I know? Because the fastest way to get to where you want to be is find someone that's already there and ask them for directions. Sure. Most people don't realize that humility comes with asking, right? Not giving. People think I'm so humble, I've given everything. No, you're not. The truly humble people ask. They ask for help. They ask for what they want. And they listen and learn how to get there and to get what they want. So if you know your skills and your knowledge, then what you want to do is align your desire to three things. One, what's doing well today, okay. right? So during the pandemic, mm -hmm. certain jobs, industries, yeah. careers did, they did well. well. And, yeah. and people would ask me, Uncle Dave, where do I find that? <laughs> it's easy. Look at the stock market. Yeah. Look to see what industries, careers, and jobs, the stocks are going up. That's yep. an indication it's yeah. a good place to be right now. Mm -hmm. Two, what's stable? But Uncle Dave, how do I find out where my skills, knowledge, and desire are aligned with what's stable? Stock market. It's easy. Look and see what hasn't moved in the last six years. If a stock stayed the same in the last six years, that's a pretty stable business. Yeah. That may be a good place to apply if you're looking for stability in your life, your skills, your knowledge, and your desire. To that, looking within at your mindset, heart set, and hand set of where those exist. And then finally, maybe you have a different timing and risk tolerance. You may want to look to see what may do well in the future. Right? There's certain industries like esports, gambling, crypto, CBD, NFTs that I looked at and took a portion according to my timing and risk tolerance and aligned it with what I thought will be doing well in the future because mm -hmm. of the time period that we spent locked in our closets yeah. or with our family. Right. How do you find those? Well, people buy on emotion for logical reasons. People oversell and overbuy. Look at the market. See what maybe, you know, gambling got crushed mm -hmm. at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. I was buying in. I won't list stocks. I was buying into them because they went down 80%. I'm like, prostitution and gambling are the only businesses that have been around and profitable forever. And they're giving me an opportunity to buy gambling at 80% off. In what yeah. world yeah. am I not going to take a lottery yeah. ticket, a small percentage of what I own, and put it in what I think is going to be doing well? At an 80% discount. At an 80% discount. Yeah. So anyone out there giving meaning to what they want to see can look at what skills, knowledge, and desire they have, want, or need, align it with what's doing well, what's stable, or what they think is going to do well, yeah. and be very fulfilled, passionate, and purposeful about the activity they get paid for, and they will feel no resistance, voids, or shortages like a third of the people did when the pandemic hit. The why me people focused in on what's missing, what they don't have, what's against them, instead of the opportunities that you see so many people took advantage of. You worked for uh, Lee uh, Simon for a minute, right? And uh, he's the agent that has been known to inspire the movie Jerry Maguire, right? You exactly. Know, Show me the money, right? That's, that's him. <laughs> And so uh, what were your, some of your greatest lessons? Because you learned under him for a minute, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't want to do that and until, you, until you, you, you did your thing. And so my question is, what were some of the biggest lessons? Well, let's start with that. What some of the biggest lessons you learned from Lee if you had, you had a so few? So kindness. You know, he was a Berkeley guy, uh, president of his undergrad, president of his law school, and he had this great saying uh, about kindness, right? I'd rather be kind than right, David. And he truly felt it. And so that I took his lessons and hmm. made it my personal motto, uh, be kind to your future self, do good deeds. If you're puzzled what to do, then do something good and you'll feel better. Uh, so I, I learned a different level of kindness from Lee. I also learned about addiction. Uh, Lee has now self-admittedly you know, told everyone he's an alcoholic, mm -hmm. he's been uh, sober for over 10 years, but I didn't really have a, a great insight to be so close to someone that was so spectacular but damaged by addiction and the in the pain that it caused and the damage that it caused in his personal life right. his professional life i had no idea 
later on finding out that was one of the challenges. My own father was a compulsive gambler, right? And here's Lee was a, a, an alcoholic. And I started to identify certain things within my own personality that were obsessive compulsive or addictive in nature and started to realize that my mom had me use my compulsive behavior to create consistent behavior of good habits. Right. And when I almost destroyed myself, I had lost that and started to do other things that were negative in nature and they have an aggregate effect. And I learned about this, what I call accumulation uh, from Lee about good behavior and bad behavior. So kindness, number one, and then this idea that, you know, I'll explain it the way he, that he taught it to me and it's not the way he explained it to me, but here's how I see it. Good behavior, if you do things that are good, you expect an instant result. So most people will quit. Hmm. They start to diet, they don't see the weight come off. They start working out, they don't look ripped in, in month yeah. one. Right, right. So they quit. Yeah. yeah. Bad behavior, they don't ex ever expect a result. But both good behavior and bad behavior aggregate on themselves. In fact, I have a mathematical equation to that that it takes about 90% of the effort to see a result. So you won't even see a result until about 90% of the way down the road. So what happens? It takes a long time to see what you're doing in, in your work because mm -hmm. it keeps doubling. You're like, most people will quit because they start listening to other people, start yeah. listening to the voice in their head and they quit because yeah. they don't see the economic result that they have in their business. But meanwhile, it's doubling. Yep. Yeah. And I'll use my podcast as an example. Two people, that's all I wanted in year one to tell two people every year that was the best podcast they've ever heard, right? <laughs> and I was willing to spend a lot of money on it. Why? Because if I could consistently do that for 20 years, oh, right? That's it. Two million people will be telling two million people. But in year 18, only 25% of those people would be there. Then it turns 50%, right? It's before it compounding. Right. Well, yeah. you're an insurance, you're yeah, a finance right, right. guy, you get it. Right. Well, this is good behavior and bad behavior. So what happens? If you have bad behavior pretty soon, you're drinking, and it doesn't seem to be a problem when you're 25, but when you're 45, your life is destroyed yeah. because it's aggregating on That's itself. Right. That's right. But you don't expect that result. So I'm very keen from Lee of understanding compound interest, the rule of 72, aggregate effect, exponential growth, and how it is completely delusional, whether it's positive or negative. And we have to be consistent and persistent in the pursuit of our potential with faith. I got one last question for you before you got a busy schedule ahead of you today. Active. Um, busy means unavailable. 100%. There you go. <laughs> Your active schedule today. Um, both military and athletes come out of their careers, right? They used to live, they had military respect in charge of Marines. Athletes, you know, enamored by everybody, lots of contracts. Transition out, nobody's celebrating them anymore. Nobody's saluting them anymore. What would be your quick guidance on transition, how to effectively transition? Find a mentor. You know, it's so amazing with military people mm -hmm. and athletes, which yeah. I'm blessed to work with so much. And I actually have a show with Marshall Falk about That's transitioning. Awesome. Really, yeah. Marshall? Yeah, and he's we, in financial we, services now. Yeah, and I'm his yeah. partner in that. So I with Virtuity Financial. Yeah. But here's what's so interesting, um, is that these are people that are coached their entire career. Have you ever met an athlete without a coach? Of course not. Of course not. Multiple coaches. Have you ever, have you ever met a military person that didn't have mentors and coaches, yeah, leaders, sergeants, not. captains, all the way up to, sure. to admirals, right? I mean, <laughs> it, it goes everywhere. But they get out and all of a sudden you're like, hey, who's your coach? Who's your sergeant? Who's your captain? Who, who's your lieutenant? Yeah. Oh, I can do this on my own, man. I've been in the military for 25 <laughs> years. I can do this on I played in the NFL for 20 years. Oh, so you were really talented at sports or you're very talented in the skills that you had in the military, but yet it was okay to have a coach to bring the best out of you. Now you're going into, let's say, financial services, yeah. which you know nothing about, yeah. but you don't need a coach anymore? <laughs> what if you didn't get a coach when you were five or 10 or 15 or 20 years old? What if you had no coaches? So the only piece of advice that I have yeah. is find someone that sits in the situation you want to be in and ask for help. Get them to give you directions because you know, you know, the military and, and, and uh, athletes, I love to hire. Why? Because they would rather suffer with discipline than regret. I just have to give them directions yeah. and both are extremely good at executing a plan, executing on direction. The thing is, all they need to do is find someone that gives them the good directions. Yeah. They'll get there faster than anyone because they're more disciplined. They're yeah. more consistent, persistent in the pursuit of their potential. They enjoy that. In fact, they don't enjoy not having a routine or a plan. 
Well, what are your thoughts, your questions? I mean, a lot of things were discussed in this conversation. Put it in the comment section below. You agree, you disagree, you got follow-up questions, put it in the comment section below. And make sure you follow David. Put all his Instagram and social media handles in the comment section below. David, thank you so much for having me here at your studios. Looking forward to this friendship, this conversation continuing to foster. And uh, if you're watching this on Facebook or you're watching this on our YouTube channel, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. So on behalf of David Meltzer here from David Meltzer Studios, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Bye-bye.